think of beaches and you probably picture sandcastles, picnics, family fun, and plenty of sunshine. But what you should really be thinking about are the many deadly and dangerous creatures that could be lurking mere feet from where you are. You're welcome, enjoy your next beach trip. From the killer blue ringed octopus to hungry sharks, here are 20 most dangerous animals on beaches. Number 20. Crabs Crustaceans like lobsters, prawns, and crabs are delicious, so you might not think twice about visiting a beach and taking as many as you're allowed. But did you know they just might kill you? This is why you should never be alone on a beach. If you were with someone who knew that, you might just have a chance of survival. It really does sound like I'm lying, but not all crabs are safe to eat. In fact, there are crabs in Australia from the family Xanthidae that are known to be toxic. Fortunately, they all have black-tipped claws, so you can just avoid those ones. Strangely, the crabs themselves aren't actually poisonous, as in they don't produce the toxins themselves. It's believed that they get them from symbiotic bacteria or possibly even their diet. They also have no way of delivering their poison to humans, such as with a bite or spines. But they can and will deliver it when consumed. Not even cooking them can remove their toxicity, which means you can be in big trouble. The two toxins they're known to carry are tetrodotoxin and saxitoxin. Just half a milligram of these is enough to kill an adult of average size. They are so effective that saxitoxin was listed as a chemical weapon under the UN Chemical Weapons Convention. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Stonefish. If you like visiting beaches in coastal areas of the Indo-Pacific Ocean or even around the Caribbean and Florida, you will want to wear a reasonably solid pair of swimming shoes. Otherwise, you might risk standing on an incredibly venomous fish and possibly losing a limb. Stonefish are among the most venomous fish in our oceans. They also have sharp dorsal fin spines, which means it's not exactly hard work for them to inflict severe pain and damage. Even worse, they are the masters of camouflage. It's likely that you won't even see them before standing on them, and then you're about to be in a world of hurt. Many people who have been stung have needed to have the affected areas amputated because of the excruciating pain. The worst part is you don't even need to be in the water to be stung. Sure, they're most commonly found in the water, but they can also survive on beaches and out of the water for up to 24 hours. And since they look like rocks and coral, you might not know it's a stonefish. In Australia, stonefish antivenom is one of the most administered antivenom products. And for a good reason. Without it, there's a chance of death. Number 18. Cone Snail Cone snails look pretty innocent. They have pretty shells and are small, but you won't be in a hurry to enter the ocean when you hear just how deadly these innocent-looking snails can be. They have a harpoon-like tooth, and they use it to inject a potent neurotoxin into whoever dared disturb it. While you might initially experience some minor pain and inflammation, it can become so much more quite quickly. In severe cases, you can experience muscle paralysis, vision problems, and even respiratory failure. At least three dozen people have died from cone snail bites in the last 90 years. According to some experts, a deadly dose could be as little as just 2 milligrams for an adult weighing 150 or so pounds. Cone snails don't set out to kill humans. In fact, their venom is just designed to paralyze. It just so happens it's incredibly toxic to us and fish. One of the most recent incidents involving a cone snail was in Queensland, Australia in 2015. I'm starting to see a pattern here. A tourist boat crew member was walking barefoot in shallow water when the harpoon of a cone snail pierced his skin. His respiratory system started shutting down, and a rescue helicopter had to land on a very narrow patch of sand. The man was transported by an inflatable boat to the helicopter. Fortunately, he remained in stable condition in McKay Bay's hospital. Number 17. Portuguese Man-O-War 
Portuguese man o' war are marine hydrozoans that look like jellyfish found in the Indian and Atlantic oceans. They have such intriguing looks that you can't help but want to touch one if you happen to see it wash up on your local beach. But that is one of the last things you should do. And if you do it, it might be one of the last things you do do. The Portuguese man o' war has many venomous nematocysts that can deliver a sting so powerful it easily kills fish. It's also been known to kill humans. Even if the Portuguese man o' war is dead, it can still sting as painfully as if it were alive and in the water. In fact, even detached tentacles left on the shore for hours are still incredibly dangerous. Most people notice red welts on their arms that can last for up to three days, and they can be in excruciating pain for several hours. In rare cases, the venom can travel to the lymph nodes and mimic an allergic reaction. Larynx, swelling, airway blockages, breathing challenges, and cardiac distress are all common outcomes of this reaction. Some people have also experienced shock and fever before, sadly, passing away. Fortunately, deaths are rare, and most of the up to 10,000 people stung in Australia each year are able to receive treatment at medical facilities, followed by self-care at home. Number 16. Sea Snakes Sea snake is the name given to a wide range of snakes that can adapt to live in marine environments and on land. Most sea snakes are found in the Pacific and Indian Oceans, and all 52 known sea snakes are considered venomous. So basically, if you see a sea snake, you don't need to wonder whether it's a venomous type or not. You can just get far, far away from it and know that it is. Almost all sea snake species have high levels of venom, and some are more dangerous and deadly than others. For example, the venom of some is only strong enough to cause minor to moderate symptoms like swelling, nausea, and dizziness. But if you were bit by other sea snakes, their venom would cause respiratory collapse, comas, and sometimes even death. Making the issue worse is that their bites are nearly painless. You might not even know that you've been bitten until the symptoms start to kick in. Most sea snake bite reports come from those who have accidentally stepped on them in the water or fisher people who have accidentally brought them up in their nets. While most bites won't lead to deaths, the beaked sea snake and hook-nosed snake are considered the most venomous and are responsible for the most deaths. Number 15. Box Jellyfish Box jellyfish are box-like invertebrates that mostly live in the tropical Indo-Pacific region. They're easy to identify by their cube shape, and some species of box jellyfish also produce incredibly potent venom that they deliver from their tentacles. These stings can not only be painful, they can also be deadly. Many sources have called them among the world's most venomous creatures. In 1945, Australian man Hugo Flecker, who had studied many venomous animal species, was concerned about swimmers dying from unexplained causes. He identified the culprit as the box jellyfish. Most fatalities are caused by the largest box jellyfish in the class called Coronex fleckeri, which is easily one of the most venomous creatures in the world. One sting from this bad boy and you can be suffering from cardiac arrest in just two minutes. Since reporting began in Australia in it, uh, Australia again, wow, in 1883, this jellyfish has been responsible for at least 79 deaths. The most recent was in February 2022 when a 14-year-old died from a sting at Imeo Beach. The year before, a 17-year-old died 10 days after a sting in Queensland. The previous fatality was several years prior in 2007. Number 14. Sea Urchins there are about 950 known sea urchin species, and they live on pretty much every seabed of every ocean at every depth zone. They are everywhere. These spiny little critters are around up to 4 inches in diameter and move slowly around their environments on tube feet. They can also use their spines to propel themselves through the water. It doesn't take a genius to work out that sea urchins can be harmful to us. I mean, just look at all those spines. Amongst the most common injuries are puncture wounds. And it's not just the puncture wounds you have to worry about. They're spines can be venomous and also cause infection. Some people experience skin staining from the natural dye of sea urchins, and others experience granuloma. Granuloma is a group of microphages, a type of white blood cell which forms due to chronic inflammation. Some people are unlucky enough to find out that they've had a reaction to a sea urchin puncture. This can present as breathing problems. As delicious as sea urchin is as a delicacy, honestly doesn't seem worth the risk. Number 13. Sand Dollars 
Sand dollars go by many names, like snapper biscuits, sea cookies, pansy shells, sea biscuits, cake urchins, and sand cakes. They are flat, burrowing sea urchins that grow up to about 3 or 4 inches and have a rigid skeleton called a test. These skeletons have calcium carbonate plates and are covered with velvet-textured spines and small hairs. While they aren't the most dangerous sea creature you'll encounter on your local beach, it's generally best to leave them alone. You can touch them, but they have long spines which might cause puncture wounds. These can quickly become infected and cause an uncomfortable burning sensation. All in all, though, they're pretty harmless. Sand dollars are in abundance along Central and South American coasts, and they've even been found on the east coast of the United States. They tend to live in warm water below the mean low water line or sometimes beneath muddy and sandy surfaces. Seeing a sand dollar can't help but put a smile on your face, since dead ones that wash up on beaches are said to represent the coins lost by people of Atlantis or mermaids. They're also a symbol for some Christian missionaries with members saying the radial pattern compares to the crucifixion wounds of Christ. Number 12. Sea Lions Sea lions look so cute and innocent. They're chunky with long foreflippers, thick hair, and big chests and bellies. There are also many different species living in many parts of the world. They can weigh hundreds or thousands of pounds, but they can actually move relatively quickly on land and in the water. Sea lions appear quite gentle, and they can be if you leave them alone and don't go near them. You can often share a beach with them as long as you set up your family picnic as far away from them as possible. However, that's not to say no one has had a bad interaction with them. In 2007, a sea lion leaped from the water in Western Australia and severely mauled a 13-year-old girl who was surfing behind a speedboat. The sea lion was then gearing up for a second attack, but the girl was luckily rescued. There's also a huge population of California sea lions in San Francisco, and large, aggressive males have bitten a number of swimmers. In 2015, a 62-year-old man was boating with his wife in San Diego when he was attacked. He was left with a punctured bone. There's even been video footage of hugely crowded beaches being pretty much cleared by sea lions deciding to chase innocent beachgoers. Number 11. Stingray Stingrays are cartilaginous fish and relatives of sharks. They are most often found in tropical and subtropical marine waters, and 45 species have now been classed as vulnerable or endangered. We need to feel sorry for them, but that's it, sometimes a little hard to do when they can injure us. They aren't usually aggressive, and it's uncommon for them to attack humans, but that's not to say they haven't. They can attack when accidentally stepped on or harassed in some way. Many people were absolutely disgusted when they saw footage of people pulling one from the water. Those are the types of situations that can land you in big trouble. The one, two, or three blades on a stingray can cause local trauma when they come into contact with your skin, like pain, swelling, and muscle cramps. They are also venomous, but their venom has been mostly unstudied. Injuries from stingrays can be incredibly painful, and surgery can sometimes be required to remove the barbed components of the blade that can break off in your skin. And as rare as fatalities are, we all know they can happen. Remember, a stingray stinger went through Steve Irwin's thoracic wall and pierced his heart. His death was the second one recorded in Australian waters since 1945. Number 10. Blue Ringed Octopus Blue ringed octopuses are incredibly venomous and are found in waters from Japan to Australia in tide pools and coral reefs of the Pacific and Indian Oceans. As they're so small, growing no larger than 8 inches, it's easy to assume they're harmless when you see one. In reality, you'd probably have better luck surviving a wrestle with a great white shark than you would an encounter with a blue ringed octopus. Okay, maybe not, but possibly. These octopuses are known as the world's most venomous marine animals and contain a powerful neurotoxin called tetrodotoxin. They also carry enough venom to kill 26 adults in just minutes. Worst of all, their bites are often painless, so you might not even know you've been bitten until you stop being able to breathe properly. Once you've been bitten, you can feel nauseous before experiencing respiratory arrest and heart failure. Some people also experience blindness and total paralysis. Death follows in minutes if you can't access treatment. There's no antivenom available for blue ringed octopuses, and the only treatment option is artificial respiration when and the paralysis stops your respiratory muscles from functioning. Most people who survive the first 24 hours after a bite typically make a full recovery, although being well informed might reduce the risk of you being bitten in the first place. For example, an Australian woman picked one up and cradled it in her hands, filming the event for TikTok. She had no idea she could have died and was fortunate not to be bitten. Number 9. Puffer Fish 
puffer fish are unusual looking fish with large external spines and four large teeth they use for crushing the shells of mollusks and crustaceans. They look just like any other fish and you only know they're puffer fish when they inflate themselves. As tempting as it can be to poke and prod these fish when they wash up on your local beach, it's in your best interests to stay well away from them. Most puffer fish species are toxic and are considered one of the most poisonous vertebrates in the world. The skin, liver, and internal organs of most species contain tetrodotoxin, which can quickly kill a human. Once we learned this as a species, you'd think we'd just leave them alone. Instead, some bright spark thought it would be a good idea for us to eat them as a delicacy. As a result, most deaths from puffer fish actually relate to poor preparation of them for food rather than encountering them in the water. Imagine going to a restaurant, choosing one of the most poisonous animals in the world to eat, and being surprised when you start dying. Dead puffer fish can also be hazardous for our furry friends. Vets in Australia see several cases of dogs being rushed in for treatment after encountering them on beaches. Sadly, many fall sick quickly and die before getting to the vet. Number 8. Starfish most marine experts tell us not to pick up starfish because we might injure them. Is there a chance that starfish could also hurt us? Well, it's unlikely, but some just might. Generally speaking, you'd be unlikely to encounter a dangerous starfish, but some have toxins in their bodies for use as a defense mechanism. They'll typically only rely on this venom when they feel they need to protect themselves, and those starfish with venom usually live on the ocean floor, so most people don't cross them anyway. One of the most commonly found poisonous starfish is the crown of thorns, starfish. This big guy can measure up to 13 inches and has 21 arms. All of these arms have venomous spikes, which can be dangerous to marine creatures and humans. Even if you wear a wetsuit or diving suit, you are not protected from them. Their fine spikes can pierce through with ease. If you were to get punctured, you're gonna feel pretty uncomfortable almost immediately. Some people experience nausea, swelling, infection, and extreme pain. You won't die, but you might feel like you want to while you wait for the painkillers to kick in. But the main reason why you shouldn't touch any starfish is just to protect them. They are vulnerable, and it's far easier than you think to hurt them accidentally. Just observe them from a distance, or maybe watch a YouTube video about them or something. Number 7. Sharks Fewer than 10 people die from shark attacks each year, and you're actually more likely to get struck by lightning than bitten by a shark. But why would you take the risk? You need to have your wits about you every time you head out to your local beach and take a dip in the water. A shark with an appetite might be lurking where you least expect it. Lifeguards patrol many beaches, constantly on the lookout for sharks, and they're not afraid to make everyone get out of the water when some are spotted. For example, red flags were raised at five popular beaches in Barcelona after three sharks were spotted in areas where people swim. A Florida Sheriff's Department also released video footage of shark-infested waters off their coast, letting swimmers know how crucial it is to have your wits about you when you enter the water. But remember, it's their home first and foremost. Globally, there were about 73 unprovoked attacks worldwide in 2021, which is in line with the yearly average of about 72. There are usually about 16 attacks in the U.S. each year and one fatality every two years. Avoid becoming a statistic by just wearing swimwear in your bathtub instead. It's the same, right? Number 6. Blue Dragons Blue dragons don't look like they'd be very harmful. These sea slugs are tiny at just one or two inches long, and they are incredibly pretty. I'm not surprised some people just picked them up with their bare hands and asked the internet what they were, but they probably felt like vomiting after learning that what they did might have led to their funeral. Blue dragons have washed up on beaches in Texas and other areas and are highly venomous, shellless gastropod mollusks. They are blue and silver to blend in with their swimming environments, and they have serrated teeth that let them easily grasp their their prey. But it's not the teeth you have to worry about, it's their poison. It's believed that they feed on venomous siphonophores like the Portuguese man o' war and store the venom in their own tissues to defend against predators. Being stung by a blue dragon can be painful and sometimes even dangerous. Anyone who picks up a blue dragon and is stung might experience symptoms like nausea, pain, vomiting, and skin issues. Don't be lured in by their cute size and cool colors. They are definitely not to be messed with. Number 5. Fire Ants 
Many people visit beaches and get out in nature to escape their lives and homes for just a short while. That might include running away from any pesky critters you can find around your home, like fire ants. But surprisingly, you can also find these annoying and painful black and brown insects at the beach. There's simply no escaping them. Fire ants are known for their excruciating stings. Once stung, it can feel like your skin is on fire and itchy pustules can form. If you break these bumps, you're also at risk of infection. Fire ants are native to South America and are classed as an invasive species in the United States. Even if they weren't classed as invasive, most people would be fed up with them anyway. They build large nests around trees and stumps, rotting logs, homes, electrical equipment, and even under pavements and buildings. Nowhere is off limits for them. If you've been bitten by one, you can slap or brush them off your skin, wash the bite with soap and cold water, and take an allergy medication like an oral antihistamine. Applying hydrocortisone cream twice daily might also ease the discomfort and rash. Number 4. Saltwater Crocodiles Saltwater crocodiles are the largest living reptiles. They can grow up to 20 feet long and 2,800 pounds and are incredibly aggressive apex predators. Most of the time, they will ambush their prey, drown them, and swallow them whole. Pretty much anything is on their menu, too, including us. Now, most of the time, saltwater crocodiles are easy to avoid because they inhabit swamps and river deltas. They aren't particularly desirable bodies of water to us. But strangely, they've also been seen at local beaches that we do like to visit. All of a sudden, we not only have to look out for sharks, but also crocodiles. For example, a 12-foot-long croc was seen in the swells at Cable Beach, Broome, in Western Australia. Officials had to close the beach for the entire day. It likely came from one of the local creeks and probably made its way back there once it had finished exploring the area. One was also spotted on a beach in Mexico, which measured about 13 feet long. Surprisingly, people got extremely close to it to take its photo, probably not realizing they can move at speeds of up to nearly 19 miles an hour in the water. If you ever see a croc at your local beach, don't assume it's there for you to look at like a tourist attraction. Just move far away, or you might end up like the hundreds of other people attacked and killed by saltwater crocs each year. Number 3. Beach Mosquitoes Mosquitoes tend to gather wherever there's water, so it's highly likely you'll encounter these incredibly annoying insects at your local beach. They hang around your face, land on your body, and leave very uncomfortable bites. But aside from the annoyance and discomfort, mosquitoes can also be dangerous. They're one of the deadliest animals in the world since they transmit serious illnesses like dengue fever, West Nile virus, the Zika virus, and malaria. Each year, mosquito-borne illnesses kill about 725,000 people, and malaria accounts for about 600,000 of those. Seriously, they are not to be messed with. Mosquitoes like to be where the water is, but they can also be big fans of yard clutter and dense foliage. As a result, some beaches can be hot spots for them, and you might not enjoy your trip to the beach as much as you could. Luckily, there are plenty of things you can do to reduce the risk of them annoying you as much as they do other people. Wear light clothing because they are often attracted to the warmth of dark colors. You can also avoid going outside around dusk and always wear mosquito repellent. If you have problems with them around your house, make sure you don't have any standing bodies of water and keep water features like hot tubs clean. Number 2. Dead Whale Okay, now, to be fair, dead whales aren't really all that dangerous. They're just gross. And it's also quite sad. No one wants these gentle giants of the ocean to end up dead on our beaches. But what are you supposed to do when one does turn up? It's not like they're small enough to pop in a trash can. Well, it kind of depends on where the whale ends up. There are often regulations for what to do, and most experts recommend leaving them to decompose naturally. Stranded marine carcasses have many ecological benefits, like supporting scavenger communities of fish, sharks, worms, polar bears, and similar. Around 28% of whale carcasses in the United States are left alone, and about 21% are buried. Sometimes they are transported to landfills, but this is seen as the method with the highest economic, environmental, and logistical costs. In New Zealand, about 39% of carcasses are left to decompose, and 38% are buried. Sure, leaving a massive corpse to rot on a beach isn't ideal, particularly as they have an awful stench and can attract feral animals to the area, but they don't smell forever, and the best benefits far outweigh the adverse effects. Number 1. A Naval Mine 
Sometimes, it's not just animals you find at the beach that are dangerous, it's random things from the ocean that probably shouldn't end up on popular beaches, like sea mines. In 2021, locals were pretty shocked to learn about a random sea mine, possibly a military explosive training device, washing up on the shores of Lauderdale-by-the-Sea, north of Fort Lauderdale. These naval mines are typically left underwater to damage ships or submarines, and they could be dangerous on land. Fortunately, it wasn't even the general public that encountered it. A sheriff's deputy saw it while on patrol at around 2.30 a.m. one morning. They secured the area, closed off the beach, and called in the United States Air Force out of an abundance of caution. The mine had the word inert on it, which could mean that it was a training dummy, but that didn't mean it wasn't active. The BSO bomb squad dug it out of the sand, took it off the beach, and took it away on a trailer. The U.S. Air Force now has it and will be launching an investigation. I don't know what would be scarier, encountering a great white shark or a sea mine. Okay, sure, there's a good chance you won't encounter anything gross, deadly, or even exciting at your local beach, but there's also a chance you could. Take care on your next beach trip. Have you found anything weird, exciting, or dangerous at a beach? Let us know your story in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!